2004, Bishop Joseph stood here and said, I will relinquish my office on or before, but not later than midnight of the 15th of April, 2024. That was said 20 years ago. To, tomorrow night is that hour. So he will relinquish his office tomorrow night. Today we are celebrating his ministry. However, the Anglican Church does not leave a vacuum. When there is no bishop, the archbishop takes over. So, people of uh, Mount Kenya West, I'm now your bishop. We will begin the process until we get the bishop and consecrate. Then I leave the diocese to that person. Let me give you a glimpse of our process. As soon as he retire, I will come here and announce the diocese is vacant. We open nominations for one month. All those clergy who want to become bishops, you will be free to be nominated. A nomination will be, you must get five people nominating you. Three clergy, two laity, and you, yourself, sign you accept nomination. We shall close those nominations, and the days are already there, by noon of that particular day, if you bring it five minutes late, you are disqualified. So, guard yourselves. Then, after one month is over, I have already put up a, a search committee. The search will sit here, comprised of 12 people, six from this diocese, and six from all over Kenya, two bishops, two priests, and two laity. They will interview thoroughly those who want to become bishops. Listen to their story, their focus, their vision a whole day. And even if it needs to take two days, we don't care. So long as they are well interviewed. They clear only up to three. three. So the following month, so I hope you are counting the month I'm going to be your bishop. <laughs> the third month, there will be an electoral college which will sit to uh, do the election of the three. And it is a delegation of 23 people. 16 from this diocese and uh, 7 from all over Kenya. Three bishops, two clergy and two laity from many other p areas. But we are not going to give you anybody from central Kenya. They'll come from Mombasa, they'll come from Nyanza, they'll come from western, they'll come from but not central Kenya. So that we have a, because all the six, 16 from here are from this region. So you'll have a fair hearing of uh, people from all over the, the country participating in election of a bishop in the Anglican Church. They will cast their vote and we get our bishop. But uh, here, we'll have to wait a little bit of that process because the first thing we shall have to come and fix is to hold your synod, which was halted, so that we get the standing committee of synod, which translates into an electoral college. Are we together? <laughs> so... I want to urge all those who have run to court, the church matters are not dealt in the court, they are dealt within here. Uh, get those cases out. I'll be coming to chair the synod, and the synod will give us the standing committee, which will give us an electoral college, and we shall have the election of the next bishop. <laughs> so if you delay that process, you'll delay getting your bishop. And I will enjoy being your bishop, so don't worry. Now, back to Moses. How did Moses finish? Because he missed one command. You remember he missed one command. He was told pray to the rock to get water to the children of Israel because he was being disturbed. And I know you are excellent. How the people of Kenya disturb you sometimes. And they also disturb the bishop and they disturb me. When, when he was worked up, you know, Moses was also worked up. And then he hit the rock instead of uh, praying. What happened? He missed the promised land. Did you know that? He missed the promised land. So let us keep the rules to the latter so that we don't miss out. We don't want you, Bishop, after working so hard to leave this church in bitterness, you may miss the promised land. Release it. Forgive. And they also forgive you and release. 
So all the bruises should go away. And we begin a new slate because you have a life after this. This church will still need you, will still use you, and we thank God for you. So let us not finish like Moses who missed out the promised land. He was also only shown by at far, but he did not enter it. The goodness is that the Lord went with him. So I think he, he didn't miss heaven. He didn't miss heaven. He only missed the promised land, but he went to heaven. So let, let's make sure that we don't miss it. We don't miss it. We don't miss what God has promised us. Now Solomon. Solomon in First Kings chapter 3. And uh, beginning from verse uh, 10. This gentleman, actually beginning from verse 5, this gentleman took over from his father David. He was so naive and young. Then he went to the Lord and said to the Lord, Now, you know I am a child. My father ruled, and I saw it, but it is so difficult. And I know it is very hard for me to govern all these people. But I just need one thing from you my Lord, give me wisdom and understanding. Let me just read those verses. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people. Ability to discern between uh, good and evil. For who can govern this, your people, who are so many. I need wisdom. I need a spirit of discernment. I need clear understanding and ability to govern them. And Lord listened his prayer carefully. But see what is given to, uh, to, to Solomon by God. And this is what God said. But have, you know, uh, beginning from verse 10, it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for life of your enemies to be ended, but have asked for your understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I'll give you wisdom, a discerning mind. No one like you shall ever live who has such a discerning mind. I will give you also what you have not asked. Listen to what God says. What you have not asked. If you ask the right things. Both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall come with, uh, shall uh, compare with you if you walk in my ways. Amen? If you do what? If you walk in my ways. Solomon, as young and naive as he was, took over leadership. He was so afraid how to govern and lead the people of God. But he said, I'm not going to go it alone. I'm not going to trust in the counsel of any other person but I look, go to the one who has all wisdom and understanding. He went to his God and said, Lord, give me understanding. A spirit of discernment so that I may know how to judge what is right from what is wrong. I may know how to judge what is right and what is wrong. I delve a little bit in trying to search what this understanding is all about. And the spirit of discernment, what is it all about? And this is what I found out. Understanding means good knowledge of something, awareness of other people's feelings and capabilities, being tolerant and forgiving, even when it is so hard and painful. It also refers as one who is kind uh, a, one who is said to be a kind and understanding person is one who has insight of good judgment of things. Discernment is the ability to make a smart judgment 
about anything you are imagining or processing, judging things clearly, ability to perceive and understand things, especially those that are not uh, obvious and those which are not straightforward. That is a challenge we have every day as leaders. Even the things that are not obvious, people still expect you to know and understand. Things that are not straightforward, you are still expected to have the ability to perceive and dig deeper and process and get the right judgment and view of things. This is what we all need. As leaders in the church, my bishops, as the president of the Republic of Kenya, as the deputy and all other leaders, as head of businesses, heads of corporations, we need the spirit of God of discernment and clear understanding of how things look like. So, Bishop, you are now transiting to a new phase of life. Our prayer is God will still give you the discerning spirit to understand the new terrain as a retired bishop. Some of us sometimes, because we don't prepare well to, ex to exit, want to hang on beyond the limited time or want to say, I'm not ready, I need extension, or, or, or I need more time. We all need to know when entering, there will be exit. Let us plan for our exit well and prepare the next phase of leadership. If we do that, God will reward us. And now, in Paul's letter, he talks of finishing well. But he begins by saying, the crown of righteousness is ahead of me. I press on, I press on to attain it. Not that I have already been there or have finished, but I, I keep on pressing on. I keep on struggling, forgetting what is behind me, but getting focused to the main thing because God has given me an opportunity to celebrate. What is normally called a legacy is an assessment of our achievements when we are there. It doesn't, it's not obvious when we begin, but it becomes evident along the way depending on how we dispense our leadership. We need to be careful, like the marathon runner, to understand every bend and every corner and make sure that there is a legacy we are leaving. For those who are running for breaking the world record, they need pacemakers. They need people to set the, the speed of the race in the beginning so that he doesn't uh, miscalculate his timings, but he persists on and on until the end. And Paul says, at the end is the reward. So, Bishop, as you retire, there is immense reward, not just from people and your congregants and your fellow uh, workmates, but the greatest reward is from the Lord himself. That is what we need to be careful about as leaders, both national and church. For God will hold us accountable for every action, every undertaking, and uh, we will not accept, uh, escape in the last moment. As I conclude, the purpose of calling leadership is to better the people they lead and leave a lasting impact in the life of others. Our prayer is the impact you have left, Bishop Joseph, will live on even after your retirement. That is a prayer for each one of us. That is a prayer for our national leaders that the impact of our leadership will live long after we have exited the scene. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let's appreciate the word.